Hello, my name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of OpenAir. This is part four of the ADL 1.5 course. We're going to talk about value constraints. There's an overview. There's two essential types of value constraint. Constraints on primitives, which all you programmers out there will recognize. Boolean strings, characters, numeric values and so on. And higher level uh, data types for here we're going to look at science and healthcare uh, data types. If you're in a different industry sector then you may have different data types. So let's look at the primitives. We'll start by going to the uh, technical view, the, the part of the archetype object model, the AOM, that contains uh, the definition of primitive types. You can see it marked there down the bottom left hand side. So a C primitive object is an AOM type that is capable of constraining primitive objects uh, including typical basic programming types. So if we go and have a look at that C primitive class the subtypes you can see there are AOM types that are designed to constrain those primitive types. So you can see C boolean, that is, a constrainer for booleans, a constrainer for integer, a constrainer for real, and so on. On the right hand side, a number of date time type constrainers. Uh, if you look at the properties of each of these uh, classes, you'll see, for example, C integer, there's a list and also a range. That means there are two possible ways to constrain an integer that this class is providing. C string is providing a pattern, a list, and also a boolean to mark whether the list is open or closed. The date time types all have patterns and ranges. So the general concept here is that there may be different ways to specify the constraint on a primitive type for a given one of those primitive types such as time, integer, real, etc. Let's have a look at string. String constraining can be done in a number of ways. What you see there is uh, a little bit of ADL source, a number of string attributes, they're just test attributes, and different types of constraints. The first one is a constraint uh, of an actual value. So the first string attribute called string atra1 is forced to match the actual string something in the data. Only an object containing that attribute with that value will match that particular part of the archetype. The next one is using a regular expression and that particular regular expression is allowing the string this, that or something else. Uh, there's a second regular expression underneath so cardio dot star that means cardio any word starting with cardio and continuing with zero or more characters after. The fourth one is the standard constraint that's available anywhere at any level of ADO, which is any value, meaning any string at all in this instance. And the last one is one of a list, one of those three words there. Now regular expressions are probably the most common useful constraints because they allow the constraining of a string field to a pattern, such as an identifier pattern. There's a simple regex there. For those of you who don't know what regular expressions are, you probably don't need to know because undoubtedly you'll have some technical person who does this kind of work for you. If you're one of the people who has to get dirty and handle regular expressions, you'll understand what you're looking at. So that pattern there enables you to force, for example, an identifier starting with two letters, a dash, and then eight digits. Another use of regular expression constraints is to uh, constrain the input field length for a data point. So that one there allows any uh, text field as long as it's got less than or up to uh, less than or including 100 characters. Let's have a look at numerics. C integer and C real are the AOM types that define the possible constraints. If we look there we can see the uh, example with integers, reals are exactly the same. You just have to imagine those numbers with a, a trailing decimal point. For example, 10 in real, as a real example, would be 10.5 or 10.1, 10.0. So we've got 
a constraint on a single uh, point in a range that uh, double the bars indicate an interval or range. We have one of a list. We have a bounded interval, that means 0 to 100, inclusive, so 0 and 100 would be allowable values and any integer in between. The next one is a bounded interval with uh, the limit being excluded, so 0 isn't allowed, but any other number from 1 to 100 is allowed. Uh, that one there shows a part bounded interval, so it's larger than 10, any number larger than 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. So these uh, numeric constraints are used heavily in quantitative data types, that is, industry-specific data types. So there's some examples there from an archetype for obstetric summary. We have three fields that have been opened out, gravidity, which is number of pregnancies, uh, parity, live births, and you can see that they eventually all devolve down to integers, uh, which happen to be the uh, ultimate data type of an industry health health industry data type called count that's used by the open air reference model in HL7 that would be the int data type you can see in the right hand column the actual constraint 0 to 100 larger than or equal to 0 now dates and times are interesting in health and a lot of other industries they're very heavily used so we need good ways of constraining them now, dates and times are also a bit complicated, so constraining them uh, involves a little bit of sophistication. We have uh, a way of constraining them that's an open-air innovation, that is to use patterns based on ISO 8601. You can see the first one there is a date attribute being constrained by the pattern uh, YYYY MMDD. You can guess that it probably means uh, a typical date string structure uh, and that's that's obviously the case. The next one down has question marks in the month and the date field. That means that those two fields are optional but the year field isn't. So a date that has uh, 2001 January 1 would be okay, 2001 January would be okay and then just 2001 the same kinds of patterns go for time. You'll see the final version of both the date and time being constrained there with X's in the last field. Those X's mean that uh, respectively that the date, that is the day and month, and in the time one the seconds field actually aren't allowed to be included. For the other constraining possibilities you can see uh, that the interval structure is, is used so that you've got single values or ranges of values. Now if you think about it, constraining to actual dates isn't particularly likely likely in healthcare since dates one doesn't tend to know what, what the date or the time is of something until uh, the runtime execution of software. In a different industry where perhaps historical well-known dates were being used or in some sort of application to do with uh, the Olympics dates on which records were broken, that kind of thing, actual date ranges could be uh, perfectly normal as constraints. There's the same thing but for date times uh, using again the same kind of patterns and also numeric constraints or range constraints and you'll notice the ISO 8601 pattern uh, with a T in the middle of the year uh, of the date part and the time part. Down the bottom you'll see duration constraints and they again use the ISO 8601 pattern for, for describing or oh, for expressing uh, duration. So PW means a period of some number of weeks. PWD means a period that can include weeks or days and as you might imagine that's very useful for doctors to express things like gestation length uh, most uh, times in pregnancy, relating to pregnancy, could easily be in weeks and or days. You'll also see ranges down at the bottom, so P1D means a single day and 
uh, there's a range or a point range of PT 0.004s so that's a very small length of time. So the date time pattern constraints are shown there and for example you can see that date constraint uh, in that case we have the month and the date day and month field both with question marks that means that they're optional and that's a reasonable constraint for a date field such as date of birth you can imagine in a lot of countries probably most countries there will be at least some people who know or think they know what year they're born in but may or may not know exactly what day or month they're born in so those constraints allow us to do things like define useful fields in archetypes. This is the problem archetype from OpenAir and you can see a number of date fields. There's one there, date clinically recognized. And the way that's done in ADL is using exactly one of those examples we saw before. So the actual terminal uh, date value in the archetype is constrained by y y y y question mark question mark x x so no day and month an optional month and a year there's another example for gestation duration uh, to be expressed in weeks let's look at some industry data types in health we need what we can, might think of as useful data types not everything can easily be expressed in pure primitives so very well-known examples uh, obviously extending to other industries as well quantified data types so quantities with at least units possibly things like accuracy and precision counts proportions and so on also text and coded data types uh, ordinals which is something that occurs very often in health and time and scheduling data types I'm going to take a quick look at how some of these are uh, efficiently constrained in ADL and AOM. We need to remember that from the ADL point of view and the AOM point of view, these are just C complex objects like any other complex object. So a quantity containing, let's say, a value and a unit from the ADL point of view, it doesn't see that as something uh, special. It's exactly the same as a larger coarse-grained object like a person containing numerous fields to do with person. So it tends to be that only domain users and tools uh, see, treat, might treat these types as special. So there's uh, the open air data types. It just gives you an idea of the kinds of data types that we tend to use uh, in the health industry and each one of those types, if you look up the top, near the top left, for example, DV identifier, DV text, uh, DV ordinal, a bit down to the right from DV text, all of these types have numerous or a, a number of fields, they're not just single strings or integers. So constraining them uh, may be a, an interesting exercise as well. There's another set of uh, data types from the Australian uh, nationally Health Transition Authority. These are based on a standard known as ISO 21090. So we tend to need a few tricks to make some of these types work efficiently in their most common uses. There's two kinds of things that we can do. Have some ADL specific syntax, that means that the ADL uh, language for expressing what we need will be smaller, more efficient, more obvious and also what we call AOM plugin types which we'll explain in a minute. Now in health, uh, at least in ADL uh, and AOM is applied to health, the types that we've added some specific uh, improvements for our quantity, ordinal and code phrase. They're all three extremely common and the way they need to be constrained doesn't quite fit the most basic uh, possibilities of ADL. The specification that explains, uh, that defines these uh, additions to ADL, these extensions, is uh, shown at the bottom of the screen there.
So we'll take code phrase. Uh, code phrase is the uh, open air term for a data type that essentially includes a terminology ID and what we call a code string. That is just the ID of a concept code within the terminology. It, it could also be a uh, longer uh, code phrase uh, within the terminology, but we're not going to look at that particular possibility here. The version of the terminology uh, is also potentially included. So uh, we, we don't have don't happen to have that in the little UML model you see there, but uh, for the purposes of this, it doesn't make any difference. So the question is, how are we going to constrain that? What the user wants to do is to define a constraint for something like the site of measurement data point for body temperature. So where does the thermometer go? Well, the possible answers on the right hand side, you can see the mouth, ear, canal, axilla, in other words under the arm, and so on. Now, of course, you're seeing just words, but really we intend to put uh, coded terms there, probably coded from SNOMED CT or some similar source. So how are we going to do that? Well, we could just use standard ADL. It would work fine. And what you're seeing there is a uh, the defining code property of the DV coded text type, that is the, the parent uh, type in the compositional relationship you can see on the right hand side in the UML model. That's the parent of a code phrase object. So the constraint you're seeing says that the defining code property has three possible code phrase values that would be acceptable and each one of them has a terminology ID and you can see it says local, that just means internal to the archetype and in each case we have a code string AT0111211113. Now that's obviously fairly uh, inefficient because we're repeating a lot of code to do with the terminology ID part. So we can do a bit better than that in standard ADL and you can see two possibilities there. If you just concentrate on the bottom one there, standard coded text ATRA2, same thing, DV coded text, defining code matches. Now we're saying a code phrase with a terminology ID and also a code string and now we're going to allow it to match one of a number of possible values. Uh, what we did, as it turned out, in ADL was to go a little bit better and add a piece of uh, more efficient syntax to ADL to make it very, very clear that the defining code matches three possible code values from the local terminology set. Where it says local there, of course, it could say low ink, it could say SNOMED or anything else. The next one we look at is ordinal. The ordinal type, essentially in health, obviously it could, it could have a number of possible meanings. In health, we tend to think of an integer uh, and a code. So a typical example is the possible ordinal values of respiratory effort in something called the APGAR score. And you can see them on the right hand side there. Zero is associated with absent, so there would be a code uh, typically from SNOMED. Uh, next one, one and weak or irregular, and two is associated with normal. Those kind of associations of integer plus code, uh, in some cases a real number plus a code, uh, occur ubiquitously in health. As before, there's a standard way of doing that in ADL, and it's the same kind of idea. You just map out the three possibilities in their entirety and just vary the, uh, the piece that re is required to be different. Uh, that is, in this case, both the value, you can see the value fields are being set to 0, 1, or 2, and the symbol field, which is the DV coded text, has its defining code matching using the efficient syntax we just saw before are uh, three different possible codes. Down the bottom you can see the piece of ADL uh, in the extended ADL syntax which allows that to be expressed much more efficiently. And you can see why it's interesting. That's 
most of the center part of the APGAR archetype and you can imagine that without that efficient syntax which is very easy to read and understand that archetype would be much harder to read and it would be about four times as long. The last type we'll look at that's very very common in health and other industries is quantities. Without going into too much detail the most obvious reason we need something like a quantity uh, logical data type is because we want values and units to be associated. So a typical example is the temperature data point from the body temperature measurement archetype. What you can see below at the bottom right there is that the magnitude and units uh, has been constrained in the first case to degree centigrade and the range is 15 to 50 and the next one is degrees Fahrenheit 60 to 122. So we could do that in standard ADL and it would be the same kind of thing as we saw before. Two alternative quantity values that would be allowed to match uh, that uh, attribute or, or that is saying data would be allowed to match that part of the ar archetype under the attribute standard quantity attra as you can see there. What we did in ADL was to add an efficient and also uh, more powerful what we call a plug-in constrainer type. In other words, a higher level constrainer type that's specifically designed for constraining quantities that allows uh, a list of alternates, uh, alternate uh, combinations of just units and magnitude within the same quantity constraint and also it allows us to add other things in such as this pseudo property uh, which actually is called property in other words the physical property that's being measured so it, that enables us to specify in the archetype that temperature is being measured even though there's no data field in the reference model type quantity uh, for property. How does this work? Well back to our picture of the, the core of the AOM You'll see a special class there, C domain type. It's ultimately just another kind of C object and it has a number of subtypes. C code phrase, that's the one that allows you to specify a terminology ID and a group of codes uh, that are acceptable in a constraint. And there are two types there, CDV quantity and CDV ordinal. They happen to be named after the open air type uh, data types in the open air reference model but in fact they'll work for any reference model these names are just a matter of needing some name to uh, specify that concept so you can see a DV quantity there is has a property in that a list of quantity item constrainers which uh, allow magnitude precision and units to be uh, specified together and of course it's going to be units that decides uh, the magnitude field normally and the CDV ordinal is a constrainer that just has a list of DV ordinal objects meaning a list of individual DV ordinals that will be considered the list of possibilities. The last thing we'll look at is external value sets. What if the definition of the possible values of something is provided by some external resource? So far what we've seen is that uh, we are going to define inside the archetype what the possible values of something uh, is. So if it's a, a numeric field then by a range or a list or a regular expression for strings. Now in health we often want to specify value sets or intentional ref sets externally to models, to let's say data information models such as archetypes and they would be typically based on the terminology such as SNOMED CT and other terminologies. So here's an example. Here's a medication description archetype. Uh, you can find this on CKM at openair.org. You'll see that root data point is uh, specified to be of type coded text and on the right hand side uh, you can see instead of a constraint saying what the possible routes are, it says any term that is a route of administration. Interesting, what's that supposed to mean? 
Well, what we're actually doing there, if we look at the ADL, you'll see that there's an element. You can understand probably that that's just an element uh, among an, a list of other elements inside that archetype. So it's an element uh, for uh, the form of the drug, the form of the medication, whose value is constrained to a DV coded text, whose defining code is constrained to a special type of code, AC0004. And down the bottom of the archetype, you would see amongst the constraint definitions, AC0004 is defined to mean form of medication. And then at the right at the bottom you'll see constraint bindings and it shows that that AC0004 is bound for example to SNOMED CT and the binding is a URL that uh, points to some terminology service and uh, specifies a ref set ID and of course we can guess that the ref set in question is the set of terms that constitute possible forms of medication. Now you might wonder why we have to have the constraint definition there, that's the middle part. Uh, but we have to realise that it wouldn't be impossible, in fact it might be very easy in some cases, that the connection to the terminology service might not be available at a, in a runtime application. So that AT0004 definition where it says form of medication at least gives us something to put on the screen so that the user knows what's actually supposed to go there. Now that URL down the bottom would point to a resource that you can see visualised there that's possible physical forms of medication. So we've made a little trip through uh, the leaf uh, constraining capabilities of ADL and some of the industry data types and just to show you an extreme form there we have the ECG archetype and you can see all of the bits and pieces, numerous quantity fields or many with different types of property. You can see down the right hand side time, electrical potential time, all kinds of strange units and so on. So these uh, primitive constraining types give us the power to build very large specifications of data. To summarize, the AOM provides ways to constrain primitive types. Now realistic industry specific data types are built from primitive components and as I've shown sometimes we need to plug in some coarse grained constrainer types and the AOM has a built in capability to do that. It's extensible and in open air we included three particular extension types but more could be included. Sometimes we don't want to constrain inside the archetype and in that case we add a binding of a value field to an external resource. And that's it. In the next uh, segments of the course we'll look at larger scale structures and putting archetypes together and building uh, the whole thing. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you in the next instalment.